Hey, shalom, I'm Akiyam, shalom, I'm Kahala, Yahweh, Fahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Fahashem, Akahakadash. We send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akiyam, out there pushing the word of sincerity and truth. This is the brother Ariala. And um, on this lesson, definitely just wanted to uh, talk about how long term thinking will lead to uh, better short, de short term decision making. Long term thinking leads to better short-term decision-making. And one of the scriptures I wanted to open up with is uh, Matthew 6 and 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the mindset is to seek the kingdom of the Heavenly Father and his righteousness. And when you go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, first chapter and 15 verse, it says, For righteousness is immortal. Okay, righteousness is immortal. And so that's a long term mindset. That's a forever eternal mindset. Whenever you put in righteousness and seeking the kingdom of heaven at the forefront of your mind, at the forefront of what you uh, uh, intend to fight for, what you want. Whenever we continue, whenever we make the kingdom based decisions or, uh, or decisions based on long term legacy, immortality, the kingdom, we will make better spiritual decisions. We'll make more spiritually discerned decisions. But when we make short-term decisions, decisions based on impulse and what we want, short term, a lot of times that'll get us into making hasty uh, decisions and, and things that don't lead into uh, profitability. And when we say profitability, we mean spiritual profitability. Okay. So we want to be mindful of that. We want to be mindful of the type of the decision making that, that that we go through as we come to conclusions on things on any matter, you know. And there's a concept that you know we go through, and we talk about delayed gratification. We the, the brother Tazama talked about this in a lesson some time back, but I want to kind of go back over this idea and pursuing the kingdom of heaven is the ultimate form of delayed gratification. Now, when you talk to entrepreneurs and people who are successful in, successful in the world, one of the big things that they teach is the idea of delaying the good for the great and being more patient than the average investor, being more patient than the average employee-minded person. This uh, delayed gratification, I want to read about it in, in Wikipedia, it says, Delayed gratification or deferred gratification describes the process that the subject undergoes when the subject resists the temptation of an immediate reward in preference for a later reward. And that's what we're doing here. We're putting off the, the joys and cares of this world in preference for the next world to come, a, a later reward. It says, generally, delayed gratification is associated with resisting a smaller but more immediate reward in order to receive a larger or more enduring reward later. A growing body of literature has linked the ability to delay gratification to a host of other positive outcomes, including academic success, physical health, psychological health, and social competence. A person's ability to delay gratification relates to other similar skills such as patience, impulse control, self-control, and willpower, all of which are involved in self-regulation, right? And that's why the scriptures talk about that temperance and pressing towards the mark, you know, um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians nine, verse twenty four says, "Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain." And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an in incorruptible, a later reward, right? A better reward. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body self-regulation all right controlling yourself controlling your impulses i keep under my body and bring it into subjection 
least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So this is something that we want to practice, this discipline of self uh, or delayed gratification is the ultimate form of chasing the kingdom, all right? Leaving off the cares of this world and patiently and enduring for a better time to come, for a better way to come, right? You know, it reminds me of uh, Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter, when you go down to Romans 8 and 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay, that's that delayed gratification. You know, what, what, what everything that we have and what we go through now is nothing compared to what's going to come later. All right. It says, broadly, self-regulation encompasses a person's capacity to adapt the self as necessary to meet demands of the environment. Okay. Delaying gratification is the reverse of delay discounting, which is the preference for smaller immediate rewards over larger but delayed rewards. And refers to the fact that the subjective value of reward decreases with increasing delay to its receipt. Uh, it says, it is theorized that the ability to delay rewards is under the control of the cognitive effective personality systems, blah, 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 blah. You know, they can get all uh, nerdy with it and eat them out with it. But the, the, the overall arching sense of what we're, what we're talking about is how... The ability to control yourself and focus on the long-term investment, focus on the kingdom, will lead to better short-term decision-making. When you make decisions in your day-to-day -day life, you would make better decisions if you have the kingdom in mind, the brotherhood that's working towards the kingdom in mind, and all the other spiritual things that come along with it. You want to maintain that. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, these righteousness things, these things of immortality, right? It says, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are given unto, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, those short-term impulsive mortal thoughts. You're putting that off and you're putting it on a divine nature, righteousness, immortality, kingdom-mindedness, right? It says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. This is just building blocks, right? For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Right? You will always abound in the faith. You will always go to the next level. You always will produce more and more and more and more, right? But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. They cannot see the long-term vision, cannot see the kingdom, cannot see the promises, right? And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail, all right? But we have to make sure that we keep that kingdom mindset always at the forefront of our decision-making and how we move about. Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, is an excellent chapter that kind of goes into this idea. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But when you start at the top of Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1, it says, For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves but not aright, our life is short and tedious, and in death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born, we're born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart. You see, people who are unrighteous, they think short term. They think we're just here today, gone tomorrow. 
YOLO, just do whatever you can. You're not going to remember any of this. Those who are mortal minded know that the most high is counting everything and everything is being reserved. Okay. Okay. It says, for being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air and our name shall be forgotten in time. And no man shall have our works in remembrance, right? And our life shall pass away as a trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beam of the sun, beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passes away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like it. Uh, like as in youth, let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments. Let us uh, let no flower of the spring pa uh, pass us by. You see that, and so this is the mindset of those that really don't have the kingdom uh, uh, in mind. They just going and going and going, but they're just consuming, you know, and it's not leading to anything that's going to be long lasting. Those who are uh, seeking after the kingdom. Or putting together the components of how does the Most High have things regenerate, go over and over and over and over and over again, right? That's what we are considering, you know. Okay, and that's all. The, those are the people that will be rewarded in the end that decide to delay their gratification on this side. When you read down and you skip down to the twenty-second verse, it says, "As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not." Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, which the wages of righteousness is immortality. Long-term thinking, a better reward in the end. It says, nor concerned a reward for blame the souls. For the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death unto the world, and they that do, uh, uh, and they and they that do hold of his side do find it. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of people as the judgment of the Heavenly Father descends upon earth. Those who were stuck in now, the present, taking the chip, taking these vaccines, taking on Esau's way, worshiping the image of the beast. They're going to find death. All right. Through what? Thermonuclear destruction, all the manner of plagues and pestilences they're getting ready to come. But those who are delaying putting this world off thinking long term are going to find what the benefit of the glory of the Lord that immortality okay Proverbs 21 and 5 says the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness but of everyone that is hasty only to want and that's what's going to happen is is people that are living deliciously now people that are living a decadent uh, uh, lifestyle now in that time they're going to be in want they're going to be in and thirst and hunger and helplessness. Meanwhile, those that have so sought for the Lord, they're going to be filled. Their cup is going to run over. Okay? Now, James chapter 5, verse 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren. We have to uh, have that patient mindset for the kingdom. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Okay? Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. All right? And that's what we're, we're, we're fighting for. We're, that mindset, the intentionality to await. Grudge not against one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all these things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be yea, uh, nay, lest ye fall into condemnations. 
So it's always talking about that condemnation and falling into the temptation of what? Just going along in this world. Just chasing the things in this world. Long-term thinking is always going to lead to better short-term decision-making. So we have to uh, make sure that we practice that. We got to make sure that we push that. And we keep that at the forefront of our mind whenever we're going into considering things and, and mindset on things. Okay? Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rakah, Kodash, on some double lines for the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing words, sincerity, and truth. Shalom.